and I'm all ready to rock and roll. Listen, if you can bring the slides up there, Scott, take them up full screen. I'm going to take it back a couple of slides to right here. This is where school gave us valuable knowledge. However, school never taught us how to alter the old paradigm. Therefore, we do not do what we already know how to do. I want all the managers or supervisors or anyone that is managing people where they go and they explain the person exactly how to do it. And they go back and they didn't do it. And they said, well, I showed you how to do it. And they said, I know. Well, why didn't you do it? I don't know. But I showed you how. I know. But why didn't you do it? I don't know. And they don't know why. See, they know, but they don't know. On the conscious level, bring it back up, Scott. On a conscious level, they're getting it. But on a subconscious, they're not. So here you got a person graduating maybe from university, big degrees, superior knowledge, but they're getting inferior results. That causes a lot of confusion and frustration in the mind. Now let's take a look at the graphic illustration. Here's a person with all the knowledge they learned in school, they got the degrees, and yet they're not cutting it. They're not earning the money. They're not getting the jobs. They're not doing the job. The result they're getting are not in sync with all the knowledge they've got, all the degrees they've got. Where's the problem? Well, the problem lies right here, baby. The results are caused by the paradigm, not, the re not all the knowledge. See, the knowledge is in your conscious mind. It's in your intellect. We spend all this time raising a person's level of intellect. Very important, very important. Get the degrees. And we forgot to raise their level of awareness. Conscious awareness. Now look here for a moment. If you want to change your results, it's absolutely essential you change the paradigm. And to change the paradigm, you've got to know what you're doing. And that's what we're teaching. So let's keep going here. Remember we said here yesterday, this is like magic. If you do the math repetitiously, you program, you reprogram your paradigm. You have no idea how many times I divide, multiply, subtract. I'm playing with the numbers. I mentioned yesterday, I have gone from all the way from Toronto to Kuala Lumpur. I was going over there once a month, every month. It's 25 hours in the air, one way. Another 25 coming back. I would spend that entire trip playing with the calculator. At the time, I didn't understand what I was doing. I was really reprogramming my subconscious mind. It trained me to look at a million totally different. And that's when one day I was on the plane and I wrote down a million. I thought, what the hell is the difference in people that earn a million? I'd earned a million. And I'm trying to figure the difference. The difference is in their own consciousness. It's in their own consciousness. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't know any millionaires that have got one income. Millionaires have multiple sources of income. That's essential. That's, you know, I think, um, I'm always asked, what do you think of network marketing? I think if it didn't exist, we should invent it. I think it's a great idea. It accepts anyone. Anyone can go in. And you know something? It's multiple sources of income. It's a beautiful concept. Now look it. I mentioned this yesterday. Here's a young lady here we used as an example. You might have to quit what you're doing. If you really don't like what you're doing, get out of it, for God's sake. Fall in love with something. Do what you absolutely love doing. If you really don't like what you're doing, you're not in harmony with it. You're not in harmony. Find something else to do. Look it. A lot of people are afraid to quit their job because then what would they do? I was teaching, I was thinking of this last night after I taught this. I was teaching the Vacuum Law of Prosperity in a seminar at the Hyatt Hotel in downtown Toronto. And we had in our kitchen a sofa, a little coffee table, and a couple of chairs. And they were wicker. They were really, I, I sort of liked them. Well, anyway, we were teaching 
the vacuum law of prosperity. I said, if you don't like something, you should get rid of it. I went home one day, and this was all gone from the kitchen. I said, where'd it go? They said, we threw it out. Why? We didn't like it. You said to create a space for the good you desire. We created the space. <laughs> that's, that's the way it works. You've got to create a space for the good that you desire. Well, sometimes when you're in a job you don't like, and you say, well, I'll stay there till I find something. No, quit. Quit. Get the hell out of it. And sit and think, what do I really love doing? That's what you want to do. Remember, nature abhors a vacuum. There's a vacuum law of prosperity. You've got to make room for the good that you desire. This isn't just an idea of mine. This is an absolute law. Nature absolutely abhors a vacuum. What do you really want? You see, there's the trick. That is the Hummer right there. What do you really want? Okay. Now look, you can, we mentioned this yesterday, create the life you really want. Think of that. You can create the life you really want. Blow this up. Look at it. Look at it. Yes, you can. You really can. You really can create the life you want. This may sound like fantasy. It's not fantasy. This is real. It's real. Create the life you want. Now, this is where we left off yesterday. This is generally where paradigms take over. Well, Let's stop and think of what a paradigm is. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And get this, almost all of our behavior is habitual. The paradigm's controlling us. I changed my paradigm and I didn't understand what I had done. I changed my paradigm through the repetition of listening to records. I was listening to records. I gotta show you. Hold on. I'm just gonna show you this. This is a portable record player. These are little seven inch discs of Earl Nightingale. I listen to these things over and over again. You have no idea how often I've listened to this. Literally thousands of times. And I got listening to it because I was absolutely fascinated with it. I had never heard anybody talk like this when I started to listen to this. That was in 1961, 62. I've listened to these records more times. These are absolute gold to me. I just kept listening, kept listening, kept listening. That's how I changed. Paradigm is created through repetition of ideas, and I'm going to tell you it's going to be changed the same way. Look here for a moment. This is you. This is you. You are a mass of pure energy. Like everything, you function on frequencies. This is really you. You're a mass of energy. That's really what you are. I want you to think, your spiritual DNA is perfect. It requires no modification and no improvement. I want you to think of what I'm saying. Your spiritual DNA, that's the essence of who you are, is perfect. 
It requires no modification, no improvement. It's all-knowing. It's all-powerful. And I'm going to tell you something. It's ever-present. doesn't matter where you are. This is you. This is the essence of who you are. This is the real you. Are you truly who you pretend to be? So I'm to pretending to be, this is me, I'm Bob Proctor. This isn't me at all. This is the body I live in. I am a soul. I don't have a soul. I have a soul. I live in a physical body. But my spiritual DNA is perfect. There's perfection within me. Absolute perfection within you. Within every one of us. It doesn't require any modification or improvement. You know what we're doing? We're learning how to let this come out. Madame Montessori put it very well. She said, we send children to school like they're a cup, right? And we send them to get the cup filled with knowledge. The truth is, the cup's already full. We send them to school to teach them how to draw out what they've got within. The perfection is within us. Now stay with me. You are a spiritual being. You just live in a physical body. You're not a physical person at all. You're spiritual. Nobody will ever see the real side of you. They only see expressions of it, okay? You have been blessed with an intellect. You're the only form of life on the planet that has. All the other little creatures operate by instinct, which is perfect, not you. You have an intellect, and it's these intellects that change their emotional state. When we really get this, when we really understand this, our life starts to change. You see, our intellect is what stirs our emotions. We have these higher faculties we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. Now think, just I want you to think, really think. Think of spirit, because that's what you are. Spirit, it's 100% evenly present in all places at the same time. Doesn't matter where you are, it's there. Look it, spirit operates by law. Stay up there. See these lines? They represent levels of vibration. That's what those lines represent. Spiritual side of you is the highest side. The physical is the lowest. But get this, spirit always manifests through its polar opposite. It always manifests through its polar opposite. Okay? Now you have been gifted with an intellect. That's what makes you different than any other form of life. You are in the animal kingdom, but so superior to the other animals. They operate by instinct, which is perfect. We had instinct removed and intellect put in its place. And these intellectual factors give us the ability to tap into spirit and change everything in the physical plane. You see, every frequency is hooked up to the one above and the one below. They're all connected. Everything in this universe is connected. Everything. Because everything's made of the same thing. Everything's made from exactly the same form of substance. Now stay with me. This is so important. Look here for a moment. Let's suppose you have a glass. Here, I've got a bottle with water in it, okay? Well, here, I've, graphically, I've got a glass with water in it. Now, if we add heat to the water, what happens? It stops becoming water and starts becoming steam, okay? But when it's there, it's the same energy here as it is here. It's moving on a different frequency. You see, when we say it's steam, it's not moving on the same frequency. It's moving at a different speed. And if we keep adding heat, then it moves on a higher frequency, and we call it air ether gas. Now look here for a moment. That is the same energy on all three planes. It is exactly the same energy. And it's all, they're all hooked together. They're all hooked together. This is such an important subject. Now you may say, well, what's this got to do with me? It's got everything to do with you. Stay with me. You are a spiritual being. You are. You have been gifted with an intellect, and you live in a physical body. Now, as you, intellect, as you actuate your intellectual factors, you can tap into spirit. That's where the thought world is. Where's thought? Thought's omnipresent. Thought's everywhere evenly present. And when you think, you build ideas. And you have the ability to think. So far as we know, you're the only creature on the planet that can. We can think. 
we can actually think. What we do is we tap in on a spiritual level. We tap into that level that's omnipresent. It's your thoughts. And we pull those thoughts together and we build an idea. Now, by holding the idea in our mind, that idea must move into form. It absolutely must move into form. Now think of this for a moment. John Kennedy asked Dr. Werner von Braun what it would take to build a rocket that will carry a person to the moon. He said the will to do it. Do you know how you hold an idea on the screen of your mind? You do it with your will. The will is a mental faculty. It's one of the higher faculties. And it gives us the ability to hold an idea. By holding the idea, it must move into form. See, Von Braun knew that. He was a father of the space program. He knew that if we held an idea in our mind, it had to move into form. The way will be shown. Now, this is so important. You're going to make the decision. Put the screen up for a minute, Scott. Let me show you another way. Look at this. This is so important. Here you are here. We'll say that's you. That's your mind. We'll say here's your body. Okay? There's a power that's flowing into your consciousness. And it never stops. It's a power. I call it spirit. You call it what you want. Now that power just is. It is neither bad nor good, except your thinking makes it so. And when that power flows in, you can build any idea out of it you want. The trick is figure out what it is you want. When I sit down with another person, I, all I'm doing is asking questions. I want to find out what they want. I want to help them get it. Now look it, when you turn that idea properly over to the subconscious mind, you are turning that idea over to universal intelligence. This is very important. Now look here for a moment. See what happens? That idea is turned over to universal intelligence. It is on a frequency, just the same as this phone is on a frequency. I get a phone here that's on a frequency. If I have your number on the phone and I touch your number, it won't matter where you are. There's no limits. Your phone will ring. Well, you know something? When you plant your idea on the subconscious mind, that's when that idea starts to happen. It turns into a desire And that is floating in universal intelligence. And it sets up an attractive force. And it attracts from everywhere in the universe whatever is required for the manifestation of that desire to move into form. It changes the physical vibration, cause you to move into action, and produce results. I mean, this is like unadulterated magic. You've really got to watch this. It's so important, so very important, you're going to make a decision of what you want. Okay? Now look it. When paradigms stay in control, nothing changes. Your whole objective in life is shift that paradigm. Create a greater and a greater awareness. See, our, our real objective in life is to become aware of our oneness with God. Become aware of our oneness with universal intelligence. We're one with it. And when we start to understand that, we get on the frequency of the good that we desire, we start to attract it. So basic and yet so simple. Look what Alfred Adler said. I'm grateful to the idea that has used me. I guess so. I tell you I'm grateful to the idea that has used me. One idea has been using me since I was 26. I'm 87. And I am in love with these ideas. See, work's made for us. We're not made for work. I just love teaching these. I love watching people get it. Okay? You can get it. You're going to make a decision. Decisions must be committed decisions. And then, and then you've got to discipline yourself. This is the ability to give yourself a command and then follow it. Quit fooling around with your life, for God's sake. This is our life and it's very short. Look at this for a moment. See this here? 
The sand in the glass represents your life. You want to see something really funny? The sand in the glass represents your life. The glass used to be sand. <laughs> That's right. The glass used to be sand. We changed the molecular structure of the sand and we turned it into glass. We've got the ability to do that. But you know something? The glass, the sand, the thing, everything, and me, we're all in the same frequency. We're all energy. Now look it. This is the past. This is the future. You don't know how much things you have left in the future. All you can look at is what you've got in the past and what's right here, right now, right in the center. That's all you've got to work with. So make a decision and make up your mind you're really going to make things happen. Now look at this. This is where most people make an error. I want you to watch this very closely. When you permit present results to control your thoughts, your income cannot improve. I want to repeat that. When you permit your present results to control your thoughts, your income cannot improve. Now, hold on for a minute, Scott. Let's look. If you're having problems, what do you focus? You focus on the problem. If you're short of money, you focus on the money. Whatever the problem is, get your attention. That's the result. Now, let me show you what happens. When you focus on the result, the results take over what you're thinking. The thoughts control what you're feeling. Your feeling produces actions. And the actions produces more of the same result. That's why people keep getting the same results year after year after year. They're stuck. They're absolutely stuck. They're letting the outside world control the inside world. Now, what should they do? Well, let's look here for a moment. An aware person is thinking into results regardless of their present results. In other words, well, I'll use me as an example. Look, when I was first given this book, I was earning $4,000 a year and I owed six. All I was thinking about was debt. I had no idea how I was ever going to get out of debt. The guy that gave me the book, he said, trust me. Do exactly what I'm telling you. He had me decide what I want. and He had me write it on a card and carry the card in my pocket. And I've been doing that ever since I was 26. Now, the first thing I wrote in the card, I would have my possession by New Year's Day of 1970. I gave myself a decade, for goodness sake. I would have $25,000. I did not believe that. But you know something? I believed he believed it. And I got winning because I believed in his belief. I didn't believe in me. I believed in the person that was helping me. I believed he could. And I kept thinking of this. And I started to think of this $25,000. Now, what was I doing? I started to think of what I wanted. And by thinking of what I wanted, it controlled how I felt. And because it was controlling how I was feeling, that was controlling my actions. And those actions were producing new results. Wow. Then I started to focus on new improved results. And that is how you start winning. So basic and so misunderstood. Now, I want you to write this out. I want, you may think it's silly. Write it out anyway. I want you to write it out on a card. And I want you to carry it in your pocket. I want you to read it as often as possible every day. I am so happy and grateful now that I am earning a million dollars a year. This is present tense. I am so happy and grateful. That's all your mind will accept. Doesn't know any difference. Put it up. I am so happy and grateful now that I am earning a million dollars a year. The truth is clearly imagined in my conscious mind. That truth 
is clearly imagined in my conscious mind. It is effectively planted through constant spaced repetition in my subconscious emotional mind. Therefore, it is presently moving into physical form. Now, I want you to write that every day, every day, every day. And I want you to write it on a card and carry it in your pocket. And if you will do that, I guarantee you're going to see some magic happen in your life. You will. You really will. And you may say, Bob, you don't understand. No, I do understand. You see, that's the thing. I really do understand. Now look at here for a moment. You have the tendency to dwell on those erroneous beliefs keep reoccurring. Go where you can be alone. Repeat your affirmation and endeavor to lift your mind up to your words. Much as you would lift your breath, from the bottom to the top of your lungs. Never be impatient with yourself because you do not quite succeed in every endeavor. It's your intention that counts, not necessarily the absolute fulfillment of the letter. The all-knowing power that is, understands and rewards according. Be diligent and patient you will surely succeed. I want you to write all that. You can go back and write it later, but I want you to write it all. This is very important. It's important you control the flow of thought energy. You've got to let it flow freely to and through you. This is really important. Look it. There's a power that's flowing into your consciousness every second. You are a channel through which spirit works. You've got to let this flow freely through you, okay? That's very important. It's very important. Here you are here. Now think of this. You are a channel through which this power flows. You're a mass of pure energy. Like everything, you function on frequencies. You do. That's the way you operate. This is so important. Now let's look at this. A frequency is a level of vibration. It's a level of vibration. There is an infinite number of frequencies. Do you know, at one time, we didn't know that. Look it. I remember the first phone we got. We did not have a phone in our house when I was a kid. We didn't have a phone. And we didn't have a phone because we didn't have enough money. Wealthy people had phones. Poor people didn't have phones. We didn't have a phone. But then one day, my mother got a phone. Now, I can remember the phone number. It was Oxford 3137. That was their phone number. And we got that phone. It was a party line. God knows how many people were on it. 50, 100 people. So when you picked up the phone to talk to somebody, their voice kept getting fader because everybody else was picking up the phone listening to what you were saying. And why did, why did we have that going on? We had that going on because we did not understand there was an infinite number of frequencies. And we just thought, just a few. There weren't a lot of people had phones. Look at it today. Millions of these things running around. I got a couple of them sitting here on my desk. Millions of them, okay? We're texting, we can send pictures, we can look at each other have a conversation. You can be on the other side of the globe and I can sit and look at you and you'll look at me. FaceTiming, it's going on all the time. Well, how come we can do that? Because we're on the same frequency. That's what we've got to understand. Everybody's on the same frequency. Okay, now come back here. Look here. There's an infinite number. Every frequency is connected to the one above and the one below. Now we've really got to get that straight in our head. Every frequency is hooked up to the one above and the one below. There isn't any line of demarcation where one stops and the other starts. Okay? Let's say that represents where I am. That represents where I am. Take an honest look at where you are in your life. And you can see how you got there. Okay? Now look at if you take an honest look at where you are, each one of those lines represents a level of vibration, a frequency. 
It represents a time in your life, and you can go back and you can remember all those times. They'll come to your mind very, very free. But it just goes to the top line. You cannot go beyond there. You see, you can't go out here. That's where you want to go, and you can't go there. No, because you, you, you don't know how to get there, you see. So you say, because you, you don't know how to get there, you just let it fade. But the truth is, you're building these beautiful pictures in your mind. That's a dream of what you would love to do someday. You'd like to have that boat or take this trip or whatever. You'd love to have that. Gosh, it would be so nice. Why do you let it fade? We let it fade because of ignorance. We don't know any better. This is so, so simple and so misunderstood. But you say, I want to go there. That's exactly where I want to go. So basic and so simple. Now look it. To move to a much higher frequency of thought, you must first consent. And then you have to adapt to the ideas and the feelings the new frequency represents. And that's when it gets scary. You see, at the suggestion of a move, your paradigm will instantly put up a huge battle. And it will continually fight you. You must take conscious control over the paradigm. Remove and replace it. You see, if you don't take control of this, it's going to take control of you. That's exactly the way it works. If you don't take control of your paradigm, it's going to take control of you. And you want to know something? 97% of the population are being controlled by their paradigm. They're not living the way they want to live. They're not earning what they're capable of earning. They don't take the trips they want to take. You see, the trick is to live the way you really want. That's so important. Do you know how most people live? They live the way they think other people think they should live. At the best, that's got to be a bad trip. That's no way to live. That's existing. Remember, Nightingale used to say, people tiptoe through life, hoping they make it safely to death. What a terrible way to do it. Now look, there's where you are, and you say, there's where I want to go. That's where I really want to go. Well, what's stopping you? Nothing. Well, why don't you go? Well, you know, I don't know if I can do it. Well, the truth is you can do it. You just got to know. There is a place. Now listen. This is so important. I want you to pay attention. Look at me. Your imagination takes you to another frequency. That's a place. That is a place. How do you think we've improved life to the state we're at? We're living in the golden age that we've worked toward and died for to get here. Yet we don't even know how to operate our own mind properly. We see where we are, yet we think, this is where I want to go. Understand this. When you see in your mind that other frequency, there is a place. Now bring it back. Look at me. That other frequency is a place. When you go there, you can see yourself there. Now look at Einstein. He said, everything is energy. That's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want. Yet you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This isn't philosophy. This is physics. Now let's come back. Come back here. Look it. Look it. I want you to really pay attention. This lower X represents where you are. Your imagination takes you to another place. There is a place. It's a real place. This is what you want. This is your dream. You can experience your dream. You can have whatever you want. You're God's highest form of creation. He said, everything's energy. That's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want. And you cannot help but get it. Now look it. 
the moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. You fuse with it. This union results in the activation and projection of its plots, plans, conditions, and circumstances. Put the screen up for a minute, Scott. Now look it. When you think of what you want, that's that other X. Then you get emotionally involved with it. Most people don't. I'll tell you what they do. They just think, that's what I want, and then they let it go. That's what I want, and then they let it go. Don't let it go. Keep thinking of it. Keep getting emotionally involved. And you know what you're doing? You're planting that beautiful idea here in the garden of your mind. And that's when it turns into a desire. Now listen to me and listen carefully. Desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within seeking expression without through your action. The way will be shown. Seek ye first this kingdom in its righteousness by law. And the way will be shown. You have gone to a place. You're on a frequency. Stay on that frequency. You'll attract everything that's on it. You'll attract it to you. How do you think I've got here? How do you think I've got to the point I'm at? How do you think we built this company? We are all over the world. Literally broadcasting all over the world. All these beautiful people that work with me. I get Sandy Gallagher, who's my business partner, an absolute genius with finance. I, I don't even care about finance. She's so good at it. That's why we make a great partnership. But the people we've got, we've got Mikey and Tommy, Scott, we've attracted some phenomenal people. I mentioned Arash Vusagi. The guy's phenomenal. He's in charge of all sales. The guy's so good. How did we attract him? We got on the frequency and stayed on it. You see, I knew this. I didn't know as well as I know it today. I got a greater awareness today. But I sat down in 1973. I was by myself. I didn't have Mikey. And there's Sandy or Scott. Just me, by myself. But I knew if I could see it in my mind, I could hold it in my hand. I knew that. I didn't know how it was going to happen. And I'm going to tell you, there was all kinds of times it would look like it would never happen. But I held the idea in my mind. And when you hold the idea in your mind, you've got that desire. Desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within seeking expression without through your action. Desire comes from the Latin desire to give birth to the children. We're giving birth to the children, the children of the ideas. Why do you think Adler said, I am so grateful to the idea that has used me? The moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it, you become one with it. This union results in the activation and projection of the plots, plans, conditions, and circumstance. Now this new state of conscious awareness becomes your home from which you view the world. You live there. You live there. Don't let the people around you talk you out of it. They'll think you're crazy, that's fine. Let them think whatever the hell they want. This new state of conscious awareness becomes your home. It's your workshop. And if you're observant, you're gonna see your outer reality shaping itself upon the model of your imagination. It's like magic the way this happens. It's so phenomenal. Now look it. When you move onto a higher frequency, you're gonna be communicating with a world that's totally foreign to and beyond the reach of your five senses. Well, what, the, what are you gonna operate with if you can't operate with your five senses? You've been operating with your five senses since you were born. You've been going by what you hear, see, smell, taste, touch. You've been letting the outside world control your mind. That's an error. 
When you let the outside world control you, you're never going to have any more than you've got. When you let the inside world control, baby, you start creating. You are God's highest form of creation. When you move on to a higher frequency, you're going to be communicating with a world that's totally foreign to and beyond the reach of your five senses. Look at Progress of this nature is an expression of higher levels of awareness. It wasn't that long ago, December the 17th, 1903, the Wright brothers got it in the air for 14 seconds. And all the ne'er, ne'er do wells, they're yelling, well, they only got it up there for 14 seconds. They got it up there and said, we don't only got that damn thing in the air, we kept it up there for 14 seconds. And on July the 2nd, 2069, we're walking on the moon. From Kitty Hawk, North Carolina to the moon, 979 months. Wow. Now look it. There's your mind. There's your body. You have your conscious and your subconscious. And you have these higher faculties. And they're like little antennae plugged into your consciousness. Okay. You know what we got to remember? The conscious mind is also our intellectual mind. And we want to stop going by those senses and start going by these higher faculties. We're going to be talking about those more tomorrow, but baby... Most people know nothing about them. And they are what change what's going on emotionally. They change the paradigm. And so you've got to know how they work. And most people do. Do you know how they work? Do you even know what they are? Could you repeat what they are? I just had them right in front of you. Do you know what they are? Your perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, and intuition. I not only know what they are. I work at developing them every day. That's what I want you to do, okay? It's so good and so misunderstood. What do we say? School gives us valuable knowledge. However, school never taught us how to alter the old paradigm. So here we are, not getting the results we want because the paradigm's in control. Now, we're going to keep working on this, and you're going to love it. I'm going to turn this over to Al to Arash.